Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales on Thursday denies the appeal of former President Benigno Aquino and affirms his graft indictment over the death of 44 elite cops in Mamasapano in 2015. The Ombudsman also sustains the usurpation of authority indictment against Aquino for allowing the participation of then-suspended Philippine National Police Chief Alan Purisima in Auckland Exodus. Morales says, quote, While a President of the Republic is certainly possessed with broad discretionary powers, the exercise thereof must not, however, be done in violation of a law or laws, much less when such constitutes a crime. This also means Morales once again junks the 44 counts of reckless imprudence resulting in homicide complaint against Aquino filed by the kin of some of the Special Action Force members killed in the operation. Morales orders the filing of charges against Aquino, Purisima, and former SAF Chief Hetulio Napenas Jr. The families of slain teenagers Carl Arnaiz and Rinaldo de Guzman file a double murder complaint against two Caloocan cops and a taxi driver implicated in the killings. Public Attorney's Office Chief Persa de Acosta files the complaint on behalf of the boys' families before the Justice Department. Police officers Jeffrey Perez and Ricky Arquilita and taxi driver Tomas Bagcal are charged with double murder, planting of evidence, and violation of the anti-torture law. Acosta says Bagcal is named as a co-conspirator in the case because of his supposed knowledge of the twin killings and his inconsistent affidavits. But she says charges against Bagcal can be dismissed if he has tapped a state witness. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana dismisses as fake news the alleged destabilization plots inside the armed forces, supposedly fueled by Senator Antonio Chilianes. Lorenzana says there might be one or two persons trying to sow discord by spreading the wrong information. He says, quote, If there really is something, the defense and armed forces will surely feel it. Somebody will report it to us. We have not received any such report. It just appears on social media, so I think that's fake news. During the Senate hearing on the Defense Department's 2018 budget, Chilianes attempts to clear his name amid reports he is recruiting members of Philippine Military Academy Class 2006 to join the coup attempt. Chilianes asks AFP Chief Eduardo Año if they have intelligence reports that a politician is actively recruiting for a coup. Año says they have not received validated reports that any personality is involved in destabilization plots. Malacanang says President Rodrigo Duterte respects the opinions of all heads of agencies, whether or not they are consistent with his views. This after Duterte's allies in the House of Representatives voted for a 1,000 peso budget for the Commission on Human Rights. CHR Chairperson Chito Gascon is a critic of the Duterte administration's war on drugs, prompting the President to say the Commission is better abolished. Communications Assistant Secretary Chris Ablan says it's only natural that there they would be angered by Cascon's statements, but that this doesn't mean the administration will go against the constitution which created the CHR. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez earlier said that Cascon should resign if he wants the CHR to have a bigger budget. Ablan says, quote, The official policy is they're appointed for a fixed term. We respect the fixed term. The world's oldest captive giant panda on Thursday dies at the ripe old age of 37, more than 100 in human years. The Straits Giant Panda Research and Exchange Center in China gives Basi an emotional send-off, including a heartfelt farewell letter and a memorial service that featured the panda's body surrounded by yellow flowers. Basi outlived most of her peers by nearly two decades. She dies of old age, liver cirrhosis, and kidney failure. Pandas in the wild have an average lifespan of about 20 years, but those in captivity generally live longer. 